Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome back to one of our kitchen chemistry videos. Um, I'm Harley from the Emerald Coast Science Center, and today we are going to be focusing on heat. So heat is used a lot in chemistry. You can use it to heat up something directly, or you may even get something, some heat that is produced by a solution of mixing. So the first thing, the first experiment, we're just gonna dive right in and go ahead and get straight to it. The first experiment we're going to be doing is actually something that you can eat. So we're in the kitchen, so let's try and eat something. So we are going to be making something called edible glass. So I would recommend you doing this with an adult because it can get pretty hot. So the things that you are going to be needing today are half a cup of sugar, right here, half a cup of sugar, um, a sixth cup of corn syrup or glucose syrup, um, but we can probably find corn syrup the best here. Oh, this is still a little sticky. Um, then you are going to need a fourth a cup of water and then a pinch of this cream of tartar right here. So just a small little pinch of it. You're going to take all of that stuff together and put it in a saucepan. So a saucepan like this, but you can use a smaller one. Um, then you are going to slowly boil that like super duper slowly so I'm not really showing you guys this right now because it took me a while and I had to do it before the video because we don't want to have a two hour long video really so you are going to bring that slowly to a boil also if you have um, a little thermometer like so if you have a thermometer like this, you can use this really well. So whenever you're trying to get this to slowly boil, you're not really so worried about like the time it takes. It took me about 30 minutes, but um, it could take you 45 minutes. You're not so worried about that time, you're worried about the temperature it reaches. So you want it to reach 300 degrees. So some of you guys may be wondering how we're going to be making edible glass, and that is with all of those things. Um, but you also may be wondering how glass is normally made. So glass is normally made from something that we see a lot at the beach. We, it's actually made from sand, which is pretty cool. Um, if you guys didn't know that, they basically what they do with it is they make it really really hot so it for us it takes water to boil about 200 degrees fahrenheit but to um melt the sand and to make glass it takes about 3200 degrees fahrenheit so that is super duper hot so they do that in a furnace or a kiln because those um that the built of those things they're able to withstand that heat so what they do is they put sand in there and then they create something called molten sand so it's it glows it's really really bright then once um, it cools it becomes solid glass so it's gonna be similar to kind of what we're doing today we're gonna heat up something and then let something cool so you pour it out nice and flat and then the, you're able to cut it into shapes and kind of break it into what you want it to be you're also welcome to do this with colors which is also how they kind of make um, stained glass as well so since I have already made mine um, and kind of um, I already heated it up and I've been letting it cool for a little bit. I have the product. So the last thing we're going to do is I'm just going to show you my product. So you can see I kind of made it um, nice and thin over this parchment paper. So the last thing we're going to be doing is breaking this up and letting us eat it. So what you're going to do to break it up is I'm just going to get a, um, you can get a spoon, like a large spoon like this or just like a butter knife, we're just gonna crack it and see if we can break it up. Are you guys ready? All right, here we go. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, can you see that? That's insane, it's glass. All right, let me get a smaller piece so I can actually taste it. Wow, that is insane. So you guys can kind of see it. There we go. It's all broken. So like I mentioned in the beginning, we're going to be using, talking about heat and chemistry. So in this purpose, heat is able to let us make edible glass and it is also used for making real glass. Sorry, it is really chewy. So that's our first 
first experiment. Edible glass. So much fun. Okay, I'm gonna put that over there. And again, you can add extracts to it if you would like as well. And you can also add color to it so you can have a nice colorful glass as well. So the next one we're gonna be doing, oh, and you wanna um, let that cool. I let it cool for like an hour, hour and a half, just to let it sit nice and cool all the way through. Okay, so the next one we're going to be doing is just a pretty simple little experiment with heat conduction. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna get a glass jar like this or any sort of jar. You're gonna get a bunch of different types of straws or spoons or anything like this. So the way heat conduction work works is it's basically just a transfer of internal energy with a lot of electrons that are able to get heat from the bottom of a straw or another type of metal or material. And they're able to rise and conduct heat all the way through that material with particles and atoms and electrons. So that internal energy uses kinetic and potential energy as well. So this experiment is kind of, um, it doesn't take that long by any means and it's super simple and it's a good way so that you can use um, your data collecting skills. So you can set it up to where you want to do it for see what happens after a minute, uh, 30 minutes, an hour, things like that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your materials. I, for instance, I have a steel straw, I have a bamboo straw, and I have a plastic straw. So this is a fun way to sort of um, start off and you can propose a hypothesis. So what do you guys think is going to conduct heat the best? Any guesses? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick those straws or materials you have in a cup like so. Then you will take butter. So it works best if you use stick butter like so, and you are going to cut it into little pieces like this and stick it on top of the straw like so. So I wanted to um, do this ahead of time as well so you guys could see my results, see which one works the best. So here I use like a steel cup to kind of keep it warm, and then you can use a kettle or boiling water so you can pour that boiling water into there. So what I have observed here is that once you start to see some of the butter drip down the sides, whichever does that first, or even just falls off, that is going to be the material that conducts heat the best. So in this case, mine was the steel straw. And then I would probably say, so you're gonna touch it and see which one is the softest. Then I'm gonna say the bamboo and probably plastic the last because most of the time if you are using plastic uh, for something or if you're using heat on it, it's gonna like probably melt right through that plastic. So that's just a fun little another heat conduction experiment as well. So the next one I'm gonna do doesn't really have to do that much with heat, but it's really, really fun to watch. And it's also, we're kitchen chemistry, so it's something that you can also do in your kitchen. So to do this, what you're going to be needing is clear soda, um, I didn't have clear soda, like Sprite or 7-Up or anything like that, but I did have a ginger ale, um, so that's pretty clear enough because you just you want to be able to see right through it. So get your um, ginger ale or a clear soda, and then you're going to pour it into a glass. Ooh, can you guys hear that? It's already bubbling. Any guesses on what that sound is when you guys open a can of Coke or a can of soda or anything like that? That is CO2, so that is how they make soda and that's all those bubbles is CO2, which is carbon dioxide. So I'm gonna get another glass so I can pour that in there. Use this one. So you wanna get a kind of a tall glass like so, and then you're gonna pour that liquid in there. So all those bubbles are that CO2. So you can see all of those bubbles rising to the surface. So the next thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be getting raisins. Where are my raisins? Uh-oh, let me go grab those. Alrighty, so all you need is clear soda and raisins. So what you're going to be doing now it's just simply dropping the raisins into the soda and observing what um, happens. So let's see if you guys can see what's happening. 
I've done this already and it's still act activating. It happened like three, I did it like three hours ago or something. Alrighty, so you guys can see all of the bubbles kind of coming off of the raisins. And if you're doing this at home, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So basically what is happening is the raisins currently right now are denser than the liquid. They're, oh, there it goes. Right now, except for that one, they're denser than the liquid. But as soon as the bubbles get all over the raisins, then the buoyancy changes for the raisins and as well for the ginger ale. So they're able to float all the way to the top and then back down. So basically the raisins sink because they're denser. The CO2 releases those CO2 bubbles. The bubbles are sticking to the raisin, which basically is an increase in buoyancy. And then the raisin rises. Then once it rises all the way to the top, those bubbles are released into the air. Once all those CO2 bubbles are gone, which is what's making it float to the top, the raisin will sink again. So it just goes through this process back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until eventually all of those CO2 bubbles are gone. So I did it as well over here and they're kind of just going back and forth and back and forth. Super crazy. So we call this one dancing raisin. So it's just a good example of how gases can really affect small parts in our life and just kind of like they can change the density of something, they can change the buoyancy of something. So it's just a fun little experiment for little toddlers to kind of watch and see those raisins kind of dance around. Alrighty, so the last thing I have today is about eggs. So I wanted to do something a little bit different, um, but I um, decided to change my mind and kind of just like encompass it with some fire, so some real life heat, something that we're really actually kind of used to. So what you're gonna do is, I used to do this when I was a kid, so I was really excited when I was like, oh my God, I could show you guys that. So what you're going to need is a jar kind of like this, so it'll have like a clear, or not a clear, um, you're gonna want clear just so you can see the reaction, um, but a top that is not really wide because what you're gonna want to happen is an egg not to be able to slide through it. So you're gonna want it to kind of look like that. So it can just sit right there on top of the egg like this. So then what you're going to need is paper. I have a post-it, but I'm just gonna rip up a piece like this. And a lighter. So you can also use this um, instead of paper, you can just kind of put a match in there. Like if you have just regular matches like that, you can swipe it and just throw that in there as well. So what we're going to try and do is see if we can get this egg in here. It's a boiled egg, by the way. So you make sure you got a boiled egg before. So do you guys think we're gonna be able to get that egg into that bottle? Is there any way possible besides squeezing it and it rupturing completely? Well. I think we're going to be able to. And we're gonna be able to do that because of something called pressure. So what we're gonna be doing is you're going to light the fire, make a fire, throw it into the glass jar, and then set the egg right there on top. We're not even gonna to touch it. We're just gonna sit it up there and see if we can do that. Like I said, because of something called pressure. So let's do it and then I'll tell you guys why pressure is doing this. Alrighty. Yeah, you can see a little bit better there. Alrighty, here we go. Lighting my fire. Oop. Dropping it in there. Oop. Oh, here it goes. Sit your egg on top. Did you guys see that? My egg exploded. No. But the rest of that egg got all the way in there. Holy crap. Do not smell that either. It smells super smoky. How do you guys think that happened? How did pressure make it that happen? Any guesses? Well, I'll tell you. 
pressure made that happen basically because the pressure inside of this jar was less than the pressure outside of the jar. So once we were um, put the fire in, it was really hot, and then that fire went out and the air cooled in the bottle, therefore making that pressure inside less than the pressure outside. So it squeezed that egg in to try and grasp for some air and just squeezed everything it could in there, therefore taking that egg with it as a sacrifice. So I did it earlier with this one too. This egg I didn't completely boil all the way. So see, in science you can come up with a lot of different um, mishaps, trial and error. Just keep trying it again, see if you can do it. Um, but I was still able, <clears throat> ooh, it's very smoky, to get this one in as well. So those are just a couple of really, really small, fun activities that you guys can do. Um, any part of the day. They're super duper fun, really easy. Um, maybe there's egg over here. It's shouted, it's sprayed all the way over there. Um, maybe you can even make that sugary one um, and save it for later. Make a bunch of different colors and do a fun rainbow with it. The, po the possibilities are literally endless. So I hope you guys really enjoyed um, this kitchen chemistry episode with me, Harley. And thank you guys for watching this video. I had really fun time making it. And um, the Science Center is going to be open on June 1st. Um, we're trying to um, work on some possible summer STEAM workshops, either doing them like with Zoom or we're not sure yet. We're trying to get everything um, together so that we guys, we can see you guys again um, and still interact with you guys and provide you guys with some fun science things. Um, but in the meantime, for the rest of May, we are going to be doing um, to-go kits. Each week is going to be a different to-go kit. So you can sign up for those. They're about $25 a piece. Um, each week is different. And you can purchase the to-go kit. And then you can come and pick it up on Friday from 10 to 2. And then you'll have all weekend to do it. And then on Sunday evening from 4 to 5, um, you're going to be able to speak with an educator and ask questions about the activity. So if you purchase the to-go kit, you get the entire activity, some fun little treats in there that we put for you from the Science Center, as well as access to the Zoom meeting and as well a video that we made for you guys so that you can follow along and know how to do the activity. So re look on our website for that if you're interested in purchasing a to-go kit. Um, it would really help us out as well. And again, thank you guys for watching um, and have a good day. Thank you.